Hey, it's Joel. 3D printing is great. We've shown it off here on many different episodes, and you can 3D print with multiple colors. You can do one or two or three or four or five, but what if you need all the colors of the rainbow? Can you do that with 3D printing? It looks like you can, thanks to Jason, and he's going to talk about it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Ah, welcome back. We've got Jason. Hey, man. Hi. Last we saw you on the channel, I think it was last year, and you did these incredible baskets. Right, correct. The, uh, basically, they pop up, and they have a shape, and then you can pop them up and pop them down. And it's, they're like a spiral cut. Right, it was fantastic. I made some for friends. They loved it. But you've moved on to something incredible, and it. I remember seeing this in, in Flint, right. and it blew my mind, and I, and I said, I need to see this at <laughs> Murph talk about this. Where did this all start? Well, it started off a few years ago. I tried doing a ton of filament swapping, like 15, 16 filaments. And it was okay, but it was just an awful lot of work. That's dumb. And then about eight or nine months ago, uh, DasMia3 on Twitter, she was trying to do a, a multicolor thing with a, like hatching colors. And I was like, well, it didn't work that well, but it's like, I think there's something there. And I was just like, oh, at work, the, the copy machines have only four colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, and white for the paper. So I said, well, why don't I find some filament that are those four colors and just start playing around with it? So at first I printed a, a color palette and then I just uh, basically took a picture of it and then got the color codes. You can find these on, on, the, on the web. You can upload a photo and you can get the colors from, from your photos and stuff like that. So I'm holding this. Right. How many different filaments made this picture? Just four. Four. Just four. CMYK. Uh, white. Nine, there's no black. There's just white. So. Okay. But yeah, it's just four colors. So each color then has a recipe. So there's five layers of colors. So of those of those four different colors. How thick are the layers? Um, here on this, it's a 0.15, but in the lithophane, they're only 0.08 because I couldn't block that much light because of the the lithophane effect to get for the light. So from there, it's just then creating a palette in GIMP because I, I know my colors now. I have my codes, and I create the palette in GIMP, and then then I convert the photos just into those colors, and then. Then I have a recipe for each color. So I translate each pixel into those five layers. So literally, in that lithophane, there are 384,000 individual 0.8 by 0.8 millimeter squares that I have open SCAD. Tell whether it's those one of, which, which one of those four it is. This looks really cool, but can you actually take it out and show us what it looks yeah. like on the other side? Yeah. So um, on the top, it just looks like a regular lithophane. Oh, on it's... <laughs> And this is only, like I said, the first color, there's five of these layers, and each layer looks different. So it's the combination of those five that then give the, the color when it comes through. But yeah, when, it, when I finished printing it, it was kind of a funny thing because I, I saw it printed, but I didn't know it worked until I turned on the light. So normally when you print something, you know it works right there. So, um, but yeah, so that's what it looks like on the back. And, um, and how many different layers is this? So there's five layers of color. And then the lithophane's probably about, I don't know, maybe a millimeter and a half thickness on top of these color layers. So it's probably only about two and a half millimeters thick total. So as a demonstration, could you print the five, six, whatever layers individually and then stack them? You know, I, I tried to do that, but I ran out of time. <laughs> but I do have, I do have, from failed prints, I do have a couple where this is a, pretty much the first layer, and then this is what it looks like after the second layer. So you can actually, you can already begin to see how it changes as you add the layers. So, okay, you've mentioned GIMP, you've, you've mentioned Open SCAD and uh, CMYK or white right. filaments. So the process from, from going to this to this, how difficult is this? Um, it, it's pretty difficult. There's a lot of steps to it. I mean, in the end, as with any big problem, it's just a thousand small problems. So each individual small one isn't that bad, but it does take a while to get from step to step to step. And right now, it's all kind of duct taped together. I, I mean, I'm definitely going to streamline it. I mean, I'm working with some people to maybe try to get this so you can go, just go to a website and open upload your photo and then here's the STL file. I mean, that's it, a great idea. Yeah, it, it, it's a little ways away, but we're working on it. So it's possible. I, it's possible. It's definitely possible. So is that what we're looking for in the future then? We're going to actually, the process itself in creating these is, could be easier? Oh, uh, yes, definitely. Because I want to make it easier for myself, right? It's just a matter of getting there from where we are. You're, you're a creative person. You've done these amazing things and these are pretty incredible. Uh, is there anything else? in your mind right now that you're thinking about that's going to be really awesome that I'm going to get to see. Just making things better maybe oh, okay. right now. Just iterating. I don't have anything in mind. Okay, well, this is my next cool thing. Uh, just making these things better. One of the things that I find fascinating about this uh -huh. is the creativity behind it. I mean, you've created some incredible photos mm -hmm. and you have 
this thing, which right. is really awesome as well. But what I just did there, putting the stacks of colors on uh -huh. the light and making new colors, uh -huh. that's fun. It is fun. It's like very I, fun. It's more fun than it should be. Oh yeah, and, and definitely when I was doing these tests, it was just, I normally don't get impressed with my own prints, but it was just amazing to see it come off. Like, I, I just can't believe no one else thought of this first. It's so cool. I Like, I don't have words to describe it, right? <laughs> you know, when you're a kid, here's the thing. When yeah. you're a kid and you get something cool uh -huh. and it's creative and it unlocks something in your mind, right. something like this, this is what this is, right? Right? Because you're, you, you've are you described a process at right. this point and mm -hmm. now being able to, like, the fruits of the process are themselves things to create other things. Mm -hmm. That's why I have nothing else on the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of seeing what else, because obviously everything here is sort of two-dimensional. Yeah. And we want to figure out how to make it, like maybe wrap things, you know, things like that. <sighs> but that's going to take a little bit more thinking. Well, I think in, photo, in Photoshop, you right. have, you can, you can break out your layers to CMYK. Right. You could technically, like, take a photograph of something mm -hmm. and then use a printer to print out the, the layers, mm -hmm. so to speak, and then overlay it and then... Right. Oh, so Lots cool. of ideas. So cool. <laughs> well, Jason, thanks for taking the time to talk. Thank you, Joel. And uh, I wish you the best of luck and have a happy Murph. You too.